the build show today we're talking drywall what's the best corner bead for your new build or your remodel project we've got seven corner beads with me but even more important we've got the most famous drywall contractor in america drywall shorty who's going to break it down for you lydia where are we here today we are in bozeman montana and we're going to walk through all these options why some are good why some are great and why some are bad corner beads with drywall shorty let's get going Okay, Lydia, where do we start on the corner beads here? Yeah, well, very first thing, let's talk about what you need to cut corner bead, and that's okay. snips. Uh, these are just some tin snips, metal snips, whatever. Straight cutting? Yep. These ones, I believe so. Sometimes we use right-handed or sometimes we use left-handed or whatever. Okay. It doesn't really matter. Whatever works for you. But uh, you're going to need snips. And we're going to start with metal. Metal corner beads. So, seen this a lot over the years. Okay, what do you think it costs? A dollar a stick, probably? That's what I thought. $4.76. Holy cow. I almost know. five bucks a stick. stick. I guess prices of metal have gone up. So I think we all know this one is what's in all of the older homes. It's what I started with. Mm -hmm. It's what we all kind of go to when you're just like, ah, corner bead, metal. Yep. <laughs> the, the price definitely is very shocking for me. Install wise, it's probably one of the most flexible. Hmm. Because you can install this with a crimper, you can install this with nails, screws, or with galvanized staples. Interesting. So we choose to use galvanized staples. It seems to have a really tight hole. When we look at this, it's metal. It's mm -hmm. flimsy. You can bend it. It will dent very easily. However, though, can you fix some bad framing with metal? Yes, and this is why sometimes, even though it's kind of an old-fashioned product, or it's maybe not the best choice for everything, it is absolutely the best choice for fixing wonky framing. Hmm. So if we're on a house and you know how you know with some of these crazy modern builds, you've got <laughs> 18 corners that come together uh. and everything has to be bang on and then you've got to soft it and then you have all these things that come together. That is when we use metal. I could see that. Because you can manipulate this immensely. So from my perspective though, having done a lot of service in houses over oh, the yeah. years, I'm always worried about metal because if it does get dented or dinged, I feel like it's a hard one to do a patch on later, do a fix on later. Is that true, do you think? Yeah, it can be. Uh, most of the time when this is hit, it will crack. Mm -hmm. It'll just kind of crack up that whole side right there. You can totally dent in the nose, and if it's really crushed, you can't fix it. Yep. And most of the time you can kind of like bang it back because it is so soft. You can manipulate it back into place. You can splice with this though, so if you do need to cut out a section, you can kind of splice back oh, in. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, I wouldn't have thought that. Yeah, so it can, it can be easier to repair that way. Um, you do need to use a lot of mud when you coat this mm -hmm. because this nose is so big and deep or yeah, this reveal right here. There's a fair amount of depth of mud right here to, to get that looking um, good. There is. And then when you cinch it down, it gets even more. Mm -hmm. But you can get this super straight. Like you can have levels, lasers. It's going to go where you want it to go. Hmm. Okay, cool. So yeah. metal, not as cheap as we thought. No. But maybe not as bad of an option as we thought either. Yeah, I think it definitely has its place. I mean, if you need to get something straight, this is going to be your guy. Okay. All right. Next up is certainty no coat. So not to be confused, and this happens a lot, not with the no coat rolls. Okay. So there is no coat 325 and 450 and then some other options that they make, but this is not that. And what do they mean when they say no coat? So essentially when we look at this compared to, let's say, our metal stick here, see that big nose right there? Mm -hmm. And then compared to this, what's missing? So this is a V shape and there's no kind of, uh, what am I looking for, concave? Yeah, exactly, action yeah. Action on there? Yep, there's no nose like this on there. So see huh. how round that is? Yeah. Like that's what you see when it's finished. With these guys, you just finish edge to edge. Okay. So it's super sharp. Huh. You're not having to fill a big reveal. Interesting. And it's just a tape on product. And it lies really flat. So tape on product, meaning you're just using mud to hold that on the wall, yeah. no spray adhesive, no screws or nails, no staples. Nope, nothing. So what mm -hmm. you do is you apply your mud, this tape right here that holds the corner bead to the wall, huh. and that's it. Interesting. And these guys are $4 a stick. Okay. Have you used this much? Yes, we actually use this quite a bit. But there are some downsides to this. One of them being it has a paper face, so if you're not careful, you'll scruff it up, mm. and then it is really hard to patch it back in. Got it. It will crack. If you have trim guys that are being really rough and they bang their trim on, it'll actually cause it to split up the bottom. Hmm. Okay. So you can have this. It's kind of like a vinyl core in the center. 
So you can see here, there's that center piece. Yep. And then you can fold it out or fold it in. But yeah, what'll it's happen? It's got some thickness to it too. Yeah, and then what'll happen is it'll get busted, and then it'll just crack right up the center. Mm, okay. So you do have to be very careful with how you handle. You have to be these. a little more cautious, but it sounds like it's fairly friendly from an installer perspective. It is. It's very fast. You can use a hopper, and you can just run it through the hopper. Get a lot of sticks on. I mean. We can get on 60 sticks in an hour, maybe oh, less. Yeah. That's fast. It's very fast. It's fast to coat because you're not having to cover as much. Uh, Cost-wise, I can't believe it's cheaper than the metal. Yeah, That's this is only still four super, bucks a stick. Yeah, four bucks a stick. And it's a really nice product to work with. But downfalls, another one is it's wiggly. Mm. If you have bad framing or you're trying to get things to match up, this product is not the one to use. Okay, because it's going to really follow that framing. Absolutely. So if, say you have a soffit and you, you come in and you're like, oh, no, that's not looking good. It's going to fall <laughs> all of that curve. Yeah. Say it's supposed to be straight and it kind of looks like an S shape. It's I can see that. Follow it. It's going to follow that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. And it's harder to match up too. So if you're needing to hold this off or make sure it matches to another piece, if you hold this off too much, it won't adhere to the wall. Okay. And you have to be careful when you install that you're using enough mud or you'll get blisters and then the product actually won't adhere to the wall. Interesting. So it's got some tricky points, but yeah, you do really like this one, it sounds like. It does. I think this one's definitely more geared towards professionals. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, it like makes sense. We're set up for it. We know how it works. Mm -hmm. We know it's finicky parts. This is not a remodel your basement DIY product. No, no, I don't think so. Honestly, if you're going to do DIY remodel basement, maybe go with metal. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can use this, but I think you're going to have a lot more problems with it if you don't install it correctly. Makes sense. Yeah. Okay, let's move on. These look like they are plastic or vinyl beads. Is that true? They are. This one is a Trimtex mud set. Okay. So you can tell the difference here when you are installing these if they're a vinyl, like, a, like you need to spray the adhesive. Which actually, I'm going to steal the next one because yeah, then you can see the difference because this is a spray adhesive style vinyl. This is also by Trimtex, right? Yes, and if you're doing spray, like th this one has no teeth, totally smooth on the back. Mm -hmm. And that's how you can tell. And this guy has little mud lock teeth all over the back of it. Yeah, I see that. Yeah, so the mud lock teeth will grab the mud and hold. This guy has no mud lock, so you need to be using like a 847, um, some kind of spray adhesive, and then staple. Okay. But we usually use like the little staple guns. Um, like you like put up plastic masking with. Right. So don't use a big one on that like we use for the metal because it'll punch right through and break it. Gotcha. These are also pretty affordable. $3 yeah. a stick here and $3 a stick there. Yeah, it can be very affordable. This one is pretty labor intensive to put on because you are spraying the, the back of it mm -hmm. and then you're also spraying the drywall. Okay. So you got to think about that. You have more time there. You don't have a ton of working time. It's not like it's going to set in 20 seconds, but you need to be, you gotta be you need on to it. be on it. Yeah. But you can manipulate this one pretty. But pretty this good. one you're gonna send through the hopper like you did the other one, right? Yep, exactly. Yep. So you can do it through the hopper or you can just put your mud on by hand and then you're gonna roll it down and the mud is gonna actually it's just squeeze through those little holes and hold on. Gotcha. And then a nice crisp corner. I like that. Yeah, very. I believe they have a couple different styles. They do have a very rigid kind of straight corner and mm -hmm. then they have some softer profiles too. Yeah, I think I think these guys also make some bullnose types as yes. well. And speaking of trim techs, I believe this is what I have in my house for my corner beads. Yeah, so this is their fast edge paper. So mm -hmm. again, it's going to be a tape on product. It has these ridges back here that have the little mudlock teeth. Yep. So essentially, you think about that one we just looked at and put paper over the face of it. So it's easy to install. It again does not have that big part you're trying to fill. Yep. It is paper face, so again, you're running into some of those problems with roughing up the paper. Same things with like splitting and cracking. You do need to handle these a little more gently. They can't take a ton of abuse. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you have that nice rigid core in there and just put it on. And only four bucks a stick, so yeah. really not that much more expensive in the long run. Exactly, yeah, and kind of compared to the no coat here, they're very similar products. Yeah, it is a similar product. That one's got you know, a smooth paper face on the inside, and that one has that mudlock technology in there. Mm -hmm. But other than that, pretty similar. Yeah, they're very similar. Similar looking. Now, this is different. I've not seen this before, to be honest. This looks to me like it's paper on one side, but you flip it over, and it's actually metal on there. Exactly. So this is a big favorite of a lot of drywallers because you get that kind of old schoolness of the metal, but then you get the flexibility of the paper. Mm. So this is called paper-faced metal. 
Essentially, it's paper over metal. So meaning no screws or nails. Nope. Um, the paper and the mud are holding it on. Yep. Huh. Yeah. Yep. So you could run this through a hopper, put it up. You're going to want to roll it, and then you're going to wipe that paper edge down. And I think why this is so popular is because you're getting that rigidity and those lines that are going to be straight with the metal, mm -hmm. but then you're not having as, as hard of a nose to fill. And then you also get the ease of the you know, mud to paper install. Yeah, that's kind of interesting. Have you used this before? Yes. Yeah, we've actually used a lot of that. It was our favorite for a very long time. And uh, just shy of eight bucks a stick in today's current pricing. I just think it's the metal prices. That yeah. used to be yeah. maybe two bucks. So metal's gone with the price. Yes, definitely. Now this was one that I have not seen before, and this looks a little different than the others. What are we looking at here? So this is a fully composite corner bead. Hmm. No paper face, no over roughing, no paper flanges, anything like that. It's completely composite. Interesting. And it's called Clark Dietrich Big Stick. Huh. Kind of the best of all the worlds, maybe. Exactly. It's got this flock center here, so it holds well into the mud. And then, you know, kind of like the metal, it has this blue vinyl on the inside to keep it straight. To keep it nice and rigid. Yeah. Interesting. And then you have all your markings, your foot markings, and then your cut markings. And then it's actually notched on the bottom for easy install. Fascinating. I've never seen that before. It yeah. actually looks like there's a yardstick on the side. And I'm assuming these angles that are on there is if you needed to butt some corner bead, uh, you could actually cut it on the angle and have something exactly. to cut with. Yeah, yep. So just like their um, their straight flex products that are in the roll, it has the same markings and then the same cut guidelines. I like that. So That's you, impressive. Isn't that nice? You can cut there and cut there, and you're not like trying to make little tiny cuts. Get That's really neat. Fit. Now you're going to pay for it, though. It looks like this is on yes. the upper end of the price scale. It is eleven eighty seven for an eight foot stick. Okay. So where I see this sitting is very high traffic areas. Mm. Like, you know, like you, you probably have a spot in your house that everybody hits with their backpacks yes. or gets dinged. This will hold up really well. I'm curious. Um, people watching this are going to go, I wonder what that, how many, you know, how many sticks is in yeah. an average house? I know this is really hard because you do uh, 1,500 square foot houses and 5,000 square foot houses, yeah. but how many corner beads would you maybe use on a typical project of yours? A typical project is anywhere from like 60 to 100, 120. Okay. A lot of it really depends on if windows wrap. So if we walk into a job uh, and no wrap windows, sometimes we only have 10 sticks. Right. And like, Ooh, hard time. Not bad. Yeah. We're like, yeah, that's a good job. But in a Some, more modern house with lots of drywalled exactly. openings, now all of a sudden you've got a lot of sticks. Oh yeah. Sometimes you walk into it and you're, you have 200 sticks which might be the difference in $1,000 in extra material. Absolutely, and that's when, okay, maybe I'm using this, but I'm only using it in very specific areas. Yeah. And then, you know, you can kind of use these all together. They all have a little bit different of a reveal, but it's not gonna like make or break it. Right, and the interesting thing is I think a lot of these, when you're done, you may not know, yeah. but a year, five years down the line, that's where I think spending the money on a product like this in a house like mine where I've got multiple kids, I've got yeah. a dog, yeah. I've got a lot of traffic. Uh, it certainly starts to make a, make a more sense for somebody to use Absolutely. a more expensive corner bead. Oh, and if you, you know, threw metal, what well, used to be the cheapest, the metal in there, and you have kids, it's just going to get dinged and mm -hmm. it's going to continue to crack. You're going to continue to have repairs and you continue to be unhappy with the product. Yep. So, you know, there's even times where maybe we have a soffit or a high area and we'll go with a metal corner bead because we know it's not going to get hit. Fascinating. So it definitely, like they're not all created equal. They're all good. They all have their strengths, but there are definitely times where we walk in and we're like, nope, that has to go this product. Yeah, uh, that makes sense. Yeah. Last question before we wrap the video, Lydia. Who installs corner beads? Because I've seen it various ways around the country uh, and various levels of custom builders don't even always have uh, the drywall contractor do it. What's, yeah. what's the best installer of that corner bead in your mind? So here in Montana, where we are, we have a hanging crew that hangs, and then we come in and then we install whatever product we want, um, whether it be a mud set or a metal. Okay. So depending. So it's a finisher's choice, really. Finisher's choice here. Now, depending on where you are and if you're union, what they do is the hangers actually will install the metal beads before they leave because it's part of their contract. Right. So it really depends on your area, and I believe that's more East Coast. Canada, mm -hmm. those areas, the board installers are also installing the metal. I've also seen in some really high-end projects that are very modern with a lot of 
raking light, yeah. uh, level five drywall. The finished carpenters will come after mm. the hang crew and the finished carpenters will install it. And that saves the complaining of the finished carpenters to the drywall guy saying, hey, these corners are out or they were kicked or there's too much mud kicked, that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, so that could be a tip for you too if you're a custom mm. builder out there That's doing a lot of really modern high-end stuff. Well, especially you don't want to be causing problems for the carpenter. That's yep. the last thing anybody wants. And sometimes framing can be a little funny and a lot of these products won't fix it. That's but right. your carpenter can. Good stuff, Lydia. Yeah, absolutely. Guys, if you're not currently watching Lydia's videos, you need to get over and see her. She's on Instagram. She's on Facebook. She has a YouTube channel. And of course, she's shooting videos on thebuildshow.com. I think you've got 80 videos or so now. Okay. In the two years you've been shooting videos for us. I didn't know that there was this much information on drywall. <laughs> like literally, I'm like, oh, we can talk about that subject. And there is a lot. I'll have a yes. link to uh, Lydia's channel on thebuildshow.com. Go follow Lydia on all the social places. We'll put a link for all those below. Thank you for having me out to the studio, Lydia. Yeah, thank you. It's sure it was awesome. fun to be in Montana. And stay tuned. Lydia and I are making a series that will be out in the not too distant future about why you might or your kids might consider a career in the trades. And so it's been really fun hanging out here in Montana, yeah. learning about your trade and hearing your story. So stay tuned for that coming up soon. If you're not currently a subscriber, hit that subscribe button below. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow me on TikTok or Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. Oh. On the Build Show. Show.